Okay, now we're going to see um, where to handle these uh, services manually. Okay, manually from the console uh, of Firebase. We, we will start with the authentication. And what I'm going to do now is to create a user manually. Okay, imagine that we have the application and a user wants to register and there was some mistake or whatever and I want to re, re um, I want to log him manually. How could I do it? Like this. We come here, authentication, add user, I put his email, laura at gmail.com, and we set the user's password, okay? We add the user, and um, now because I've had it manually and I know the password, but when uh, this happens through Flutterflow, this is odd all what we will see about a user. The email, how, which provider this user used to get into our platform, when was created, when was uh, last time that was signed in, and this ID. This ID is the user ID, okay? It's a token generated uh, automatically by Firebase, and this is the unique identifier that um, will be used internally. Um, also mentioned that when a user is created through Flutterflow, that is what we're going to use to, um, that's how we will do it normally, and um, we will not be able to see the this person's password ever. Like there is no option here to see this person's password. All I can do is delete the account, disable the account. Okay, if I delete the account, of course, there is no more account. Um, I can disable the account, which means that uh, that this person, the user is not deleted, but cannot interact with our platform, okay? And, um, and I can enable it again. Basically, those are the main operations that we can do through, through here. And what is uh, very convenient about uh, this way of logging users, it's the templates. Firebase um, gives us all these options, you know, like when you forgot your password, when you want to change your email, the email address verification, reset the password, all these uh, operations are automatically uh, provided by, the, by, Fire, by Firebase. SMS verification, uh, multifact, which believe me that to develop this by by heart is not an easy task. Um, we will not use um, probably this in our application, but so just that you know that it's here and uh, with the action uh, send an email verification. This are automatically sends the email verification and uh, verifies if the user does all the operations without us having to uh, get the password of the user, okay? Um, next tool, which is the one that we will use more intensively, Firestore database. Uh, this is a NoSQL database, object-based um, object uh, database, and um, we have a coll collections and objects. To make it sound more familiar, this is a bit like tables, okay? For example, I will create now a table of users, which is kind of the, the common auto ID, and this user will be Laura, who said it was Laura at gmail.com, and her name is Laura, and her description it's uh, I like dogs. <laughs> uh, we click save and now we see here an object. Okay, you see this is an object of the user Laura. I can create another document. Email. This is the property of the field. This is kind of the equivalent to the column of the table. This is the data, the type of the value. We have strings, which are characters, okay, which are text numbers, booleans, true or false, a map, which is like another object, okay, that has more properties. Look that this is deriving, eh? This is like a JavaScript object. 
um, an array, which is a collection of items, a null, timestamp, which is a, a date, okay? Geo point, which we're not gonna use this, and a reference, which is like uh, a string pointing to another document in this database. Okay, for example, if I want to point to the, if I wanted to point um, to the user of Laura, this is Pedro at gmail.com. If I wanted to use it to point at this, I should get the token, the ID of the document. And here I will create another field, which is like the reference to Laura and document reference. And I paste the ID, sorry, the users slash. And this is a reference. This is a reference pointing to another object in this database. And this is, this database is really flexible, like I will create another collection now called um, chats, okay? Uh, the one. Okay, this is, I have now more than one collection. Uh, it's really flexible because, um, and it's called no, no SQL, not structured query language, because I can, uh, have different objects with different structures inside. Okay, I can do it, which does not mean that I should do it, <laughs> but um, uh, it allows me to 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 do it in this way. Um, and I can have sub collections. For example, uh, people I like. I have a sub collection here, which is like uh, imagine a tree. Okay, imagine a tree. So this is uh, this is another branch. A D. 123 you see collection users from the user pedro and the sub collection people i like so this collection it's uh, depending on the user pedro okay and uh, here i can add, and i can add as many sub collections as i want i think there is a limit of course i don't re re remember now but anyway we will not do anything farther than two sub collections so two levels deep Take into account that the, here there are two levels. Collection users, document Pedro, sub-collection people I like, and document. It's collection, document, collection, document. It's always like that, okay? That's how it works. And, um, and uh, if I want to delete uh, a property, I can delete it here. If I want to delete an object, I can delete it like this, delete a document, okay? And um, and if I want to do more advanced stuff like um, like creating uh, backups and all of that, I should click here in uh, more in Google Cloud. But I'm not going to go much deeper into this because it's a uh, this should need a, this mm, is such a wide topic that would be necessary another course for itself. Um, and fortunately, we will interact more with the database through flutter flow than through here but i just wanted to show you that this is possible and um, uh, finally we have the storage okay in the storage we have a bucket which is like kind of some folders and uh, folder structure that you can uh, have here on the on the, on the cloud um, so what i'll do is i'll create a folder called users I can create subfolders inside this folder. I can create another subfolder called pictures. Okay, look here. If I select this, look, users, folder, subfolder. Here there is no, no structure like collection document, no. This is like um, what you would have in your Windows or your Linux or your Mac, okay? And here I will now upload a file. Let me find a file, one sec. I have an image of a dog and um, I will upload the file. I hold to here and doc here is the image right and here i have if i click you see here this is the image of the doc and um and this is a identifier that loads this image this file we will also use videos and everything but it's inside the google cloud platform or remember that Firebase, it's, connect, it's creating you a Google Cloud platform 
uh, account. You don't see it, but it's behind. And we will use it. Not now, don't worry, but we will use it. Um, so I could also upload the videos, and, but not necessary now. Then we have functions. There are more things which I'm not covering, but for now, this is all what we need. And uh, remember that you can interact with the, the manually with the platform in some, if there is some scenario that is necessary. But for now, we leave it here. <laughs>